gosh, it's about time we're back. Uh, I'm so relieved. I will never forget when we were leaving production. The last day, can I talk? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, though, I really did feel like it was going to be World War Z there for a minute. I was mm -hmm. scared. I really was really, really scared. Yeah. Um, and then it got even more scary. It sure did. And then it got even scarier. <laughs> we made it and we're here. We are, and we are what? Queer. And we are gorgeous. And my outfit is like really just like a conglomeration. You know what this outfit is? This story I want to tell you about this story. Huh? This, this outfit, this outfit is a collection of everything in 2020 that I didn't get to wear. All uh, the outfits that I didn't get to wear, so I just threw on a little uh, bit of everything. Uh, I wore this. Jackie. Yeah. Jackie, what else happened time. in your year? Oh. <clears throat> oh, wait. What is that? Oh, I'm, I'm blinded. I'm oh blinded my gosh, by your finger. Um, I, did, I, <laughs> I did get married. Yeah! Uh, but I don't want people to, you do not have to get married to be happy, okay? No. That's you true. Can be, you can be single. You can be, you know what the great Nicole Scherzinger said? Actually, I think it was all the pussycat dolls. They all said, when they grow up, they I want to be don't famous? need a hmm. man to make me feel good. Yes. Yes, but at the same time, you're allowed to be happy you about it. You can't meet your person. I just feel really, sen you know what it is? Like, I love my husband so much, and I really am so happy that I found my person. But I just feel like I remember being a young person and being so afraid that yeah. I would meet someone yeah. in my, in, in yeah. so I just, I don't, it's not, it's there's not, many so now you're an mountain. example of somebody who's figured it out, and that can be aspirational to other people. Yeah. Thank you. What? Just saying. <laughs> David. <laughs> Gorgeous. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes I turn into Alexis. <laughs> um, and everyone from Schitt's Creek, because uh, I watch it so many times. You know, I love that about Schitt's Creek. I love that about Schitt's Creek. Anyway. Um, so you got married. That was wonderful. And then you got pregnant. Baby. We are having a baby. <laughs> Wait, can we baby. start? Can, yes. You became a, an, American an American citizen. citizen. And now you're going to have a baby. Proud. Yes, a very proud American citizen. America Who? got a new baby. America has a You're getting a new baby. But you yeah. literally voted. That was the, one of the biggest moments of last year for me. I got to vote as an American citizen and vote for the president that I would respect. Yes. Okay, so let me just, can I just do like a POV from Tan yes. on the day that you voted? Yeah. You woke up. Uh-huh. You did a French tuck. I sure did. And then you went to the polling station. I sure did. Yeah, I just I wanted did. to say that you woke up and did a French tuck. <laughs> I, I think the feeling that you had voting, realizing how important it was and how lucky you were to yeah. now be able to do it, yeah. is something, honestly, that I feel a lot of Americans felt this year. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. the first time that you really felt that your vote mattered. Yeah. Because people getting out to vote actually changed yeah. things this time. Yeah. And I really hope that it re-energizes yeah. our American democracy. Agreed. That everyone gets out and yeah. votes because Agreed. you realize, you know what? Yes, in the past, sometimes it might have felt like our votes didn't count. Yeah. But this time we proved, we proved our Amen. votes did count. Yep. And here's the thing. I'm, I was always very proud to be British, but I'm extremely proud to be American. I really am. It feels Second beautiful to, to be an American. I know. Be an American. <laughs> that is that so song. cute. No, I'm not that American yet. <laughs> <laughs> I that song. Jan, you made me proud to be, you made me prouder Thanks. to be an American. Thanks, my love. I appreciate it. You know what I mean? Like, Thanks. literally, like, I feel like that's yeah. kind of, it gives you, like, some yeah. juice to keep on going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, because sometimes love. you can really run out of gas. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And with my power as an American, I got some lady pregnant, and now I'm gonna have a baby. <laughs> I love this story so much. She's a wonderful, wonderful Wait, lady. If you say it like that, I get so jealous. <laughs> I get so jealous when you say it like that because that's literally what happened. I know. But I like, got you pregnant, and I now we're having a baby. I can't believe that. I know. Oh, no, 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 no. And then. He got a dog! I did! Oh, <laughs> she's sleeping. She's taking a little nap. Mm. Little neon. She knew that we were talking about her. She was meant to be a little foster when we when we stopped filming last year and then mm. went back to New York and I went for my free vet visit to APA because I wanted to take advantage of that. Yeah. Because I can be cheap. Yeah. And then um, they were like, well, well, why do you need another vet visit? You just had one two months ago. And I was like, well, because we're going to New York. And they're like, well, you can't take a rescue foster mm. out of state unless they're adopted. So. Well can, I just, oh. well, can I just say like that that story is like kind of, um, I don't know if it's too soon, but fake news. Because I called rightly so after your third day with Neon, I took one look at you two together and I said, that's going to be a foster bill. I knew immediately. <laughs> day three, I, said, that, that's be I didn't know it. And, then is... I know, and you said that. And then I was like, but that's not true. And then that was what happened. That is exactly why I do reunited in foster. Because I'm like, I will never give it back. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll get another one. And, like yeah. my mom, my parents, and their dog. me. 15 years passed away recently. Aww. And so they, after months of searching, got a rescue. Yeah. 
and now they have three. <laughs> yeah. um, Took them forever to find the first one, and then another one, and another one. That's it's so cute. Is. You know what? I actually got to spend more time with my husband yeah. in the last year than I think we have in like the last 10 years. That's and it's great. been great, because yeah. sometimes when you're a couple that works a lot and travels a lot, maybe you wonder, huh, do we work because we don't see each other that often? <laughs> But this last year proved that wasn't the case. This yeah. last year we proved we worked just because we're each other's A great people. match. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Good, I love that. And then Kay. And then Kay. You know, my 2020 was just full of like activism and trying to figure out how to like get our world back on track. And make our country better. Yeah, because yeah. there was a lot of black people dying and mm -hmm. a lot of trans people dying. Mm -hmm. I didn't like it at all. Mm -hmm. And so I just like the fact that we're here back because I felt like the world needed Queer Eye. Yeah. I was like, I want to get back. I want to spread more joy. I want to yeah. spread more love. Yeah. I just felt that the entire time yeah. during the pandemic. Well, that's where this show came from when we first came back was to cre hopefully create a, a pocket of joy yeah. in all the madness that was going on. Yeah. And we need it again, yeah. actually probably now more than ever. Mm -hmm. But it happened at a crazy time too. <laughs> like if you remember, our latest season came out, it, it was literally a few days after George Floyd right. was killed. Yeah. Right. It was such a, sur I mean, I think from March when production shut down mm -hmm. to now mm -hmm. has really just continued to be uh, just new and like on just so many feelings at once. Because yeah. on one hand, it's like, I'm so grateful that I'm here. I'm so grateful to have experienced what we've been able to experience. And mm -hmm. we've been so blessed to have our health and safety and mm -hmm. like, this has just been, yes, a time where we need joy, and I'm so happy to be a part of a show that does that. At the same time, I think we would be like not, like it. We have to acknowledge the yeah. grief yeah. and the pain yes. and the suffering yeah. Yeah. that has happened. And and what you were just mentioning, Cromo, like obviously we know that didn't that wasn't um, only in 2020. Mm -hmm. yeah. That has continued since it's yeah. been before. And so I think it's there's been compounded suffering and grief. And I love you. So much. I love you too. And I think one of the things that was interesting is during the pandemic, like so many people were reaching out to me and I know mm -hmm. all to you, all of you and mm -hmm. were like, I really need to lean on you. And that's mm -hmm. where I saw like social media mm -hmm. and like all of these platforms we have where people really were like, okay, these are five people that we can trust, that mm -hmm. we know. And even though we were trying to deal with our own emotions mm -hmm. and navigate life, yeah. it felt nice to sort of still be there for other people. Yeah. And be able to give them some tools of like how to handle their mental health, like mm -hmm. yeah. you know what to do. One of the things that I was really proud of as a show is, you know, obviously our our show launch was prepped out, yeah, a long time, yeah. And to be a part of a show on a network that so instantly pivoted, yeah, and used what would have been our show launch actually mm -hmm. to support what was going on yeah. in the world. And I was driving down Sunset. And I saw this billboard and I'm reading it and I'm like, we believe and we support. I was like, oh, I love this. Mm -hmm. And I saw it was one of our billboards. Yeah. And I'm like, it made me really happy to be a part of a show yeah. that can try to affect change. Yeah. We're not just out there trying to entertain, we're actually trying to make the world a better place yeah. and mm -hmm. to have a network that supports that mm -hmm. meant a lot. Yeah, it really yeah. did. Um, it, it is a shame when you look back on last year thinking, okay, that was 2020. There is still so much of that still going on. We all see what's going on in the press right now. India's going through the hardest time ever. Yep. Um, and so it is strange to be celebrating how far we've come, yet we're nowhere near where we need to be. We're not supporting anywhere near as much as, as we need to support each other. But the, the joy of being on a show like ours, where we at least try and open up a conversation suggest to people who are watching our show that they consider something that they may have never considered before. Yes. Seeing people of yes. color as equal, seeing queer people as equal, even if it just makes somebody think of that one person differently, as far as I'm concerned, we've done all we were meant to yeah. do. Which is so beautiful because that mm -hmm. is it. I mean, yeah. I think so often, I know you guys have gotten this question, it's like, visibility is so important, representation is so important. Yeah. But one thing I always think is, is that it's not in subs it's not in place of actual progress yeah. in the world. Yeah. And I think it's really important for me. One thing I've really ha thought about a lot is that like, but we're not promising to fix the world. No. What we're here doing is like really trying to connect with people. Mm -hmm. And I think that is such a beautiful thought mm -hmm. to sew because so often it's like we see the person mm -hmm. and it's an instant no. Yeah. There's an instant judgment for yeah. so many different yeah. reasons because so Absolutely. many reasons. I've experienced that with even some of the heroes at the beginning. And yeah. we, that's, I, it is like a microcosm of what we need to start to do, mm -hmm. which is to reach out more yeah. and yeah. try to connect more. Yeah. And 
It is an honor to be part of a show that does that and brings so much joy and just so much like, Fashion. Fashion. You're excellent, frankly, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. And I also just like to say, like, quick hip tip. I just learned when you have long hair, these, like, really fierce hair ties that have, like, hooks on the end. It's like a, it's like an elastic with two hooks. Uh -huh. Like, even though I have, like, Bermuda Triangle hairlines and it's, like, kind of starting to, like, betray me, you can use these, like, little hook things and it, like, just keeps your pony. And I can do this kind of, like, hair over my ear thing to just give you, like, an elevated, like, Emmy zhuzh. <laughs> you know, just a little zhuzh that says, host, to me, I don't know, is it a, ooh, is it us? You... Which makes me think about the first time <laughs> we Somebody got the shield. <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. so I'm gonna go No, it was an exciting you. memory. I I'm so excited memory. I could just spit. <laughs> Because that we was were in Kansas City. Set the scene. No, we well, were We, we no, were in Philly. Our first, no. No. first one. Oh, oh, first oh I'm time sorry. I thought you made it as host. host. No, 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 We've no, been doing this for a while. Our no, first the, nomination. Ah, ah. So the first nomination we were actually ever, the show got was actually yeah. in Kansas City, as yeah. long as, yes, it was in Kansas City for the show. Yeah. But the one I was talking about, oh. which was so exciting, which, I mean, obviously, we love Queer Eye, we love the show, we wanted to get all yeah. the nominations. We want nominations raining like the rain outside, you know, just, yes. you know, in the great words of Ashanti, rain on me, you know? Oh. And I thought it was Ashanti. Yeah. 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 And like, nice. it was like 2003, 2004 was a different time. Mm -hmm. Bush was in, and Ashanti was really just singing caressing my cares away. I mean, she really did it for me. She still uh -huh. does. But it was when we found out that we got nominated for host for that the first time. Yeah. That was it wasn't. Early. It was, it was in the trailer. We, we didn't get nominated for host that time. No. We got no, we, it was in the middle time. of the pandemic. It was in the middle yes, of the pandemic. Yes, we all woke up. I was in New York alone. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, it was I in the middle of the pandemic. I sent you guys yeah. a video of me going, Oh, yeah. 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 I actually yeah. purposely that morning didn't set an alarm because I didn't want to wake up and watch it because I was too nervous. Yeah. But I woke up to like tons of texts from you guys. I was like, yay! That's so bad for us. And like, I honestly, know. it's kind of like Lizzo said when she won a Grammy, but like before that, no, I think it was a BET award. But whatever, she had this speech and she was like, you know what? The first time I came here, I was so excited. Then I got nominated, I didn't win, I was so excited. Then now I got nominated and I won and I'm so excited because really what she was always excited about, she'd already won. And yeah. so, but to yeah. get that with you guys and to experience that together, to be honored in yeah. that way for like, to be called a host and to be acknowledged by our peers yeah. for that. Yeah. I mean, I actually, like, really have chills on my triceps, and it's not because my and dress is... Like, oh, one, one thing that just yeah. dawned on me, every single year where there's a nomination, whether it's host or whether it's anybody from the entire Queer Eye team, if we weren't together in person, you can always trust that Bobby was setting up, like, a FaceTime call with yeah. all five of us, yeah, no matter yeah, yeah. where we were. I was on the toilet yeah. once, but we were all yeah. there. We all made <laughs> that. that was actually me this time. And I, I do want wasn't to, to shame you. I also want to talk about the importance of that um, host nomination for us. Up until that point, we hadn't been nominated because I think that people didn't see right. us as hosts because we're not stood on a big stage. We don't have a teleprompter. But what I really... We had to come up with our lines yeah, on the fly. Yeah, which yeah. I, I, honestly I, I think is so incredibly difficult yeah. to make sure yes. that you are connecting so sure. strongly with somebody. And so to be recognized for our work really did feel special, mm -hmm. super special. Yeah, because I know we, not to like stick my own bi like non-binary head up my own ass, but... Oh. We make it look easy. Yeah. But it's not. I, no, think, that, at I all. think that's why no. we ordinarily hadn't been nominated or don't get nominated because people think, well, they're just doing their thing. But no, it requires so much work. And to I, didn't realize, I didn't realize how hard it was until have now having done yeah. a show where we yes. do have a teleprompter and we yes. do have an earpiece. This one we don't. Yeah. It's all us. I actually find I this mean, no joke. I find this so much harder. Being on a show where you have somebody feeding you every line, it's, it was, it, this, it, it wasn't easy, well, but it, this, Knowing that we have to connect so greatly with everybody we meet and make them feel like they're in our world, that there's no production, yep. that takes, as far as I'm concerned, a skilled host. But that's a testament to like the nature of our show. It's that we're meant to have these conversations yeah. with our heroes. None of that is scripted. Yeah. All of that, we're just rolling with the punches. Yeah. Like just looking at Terry when yeah. we were watching her a little bit ago. Yeah. And it's sort of like, like, that was a really challenging episode. Yeah. And sometimes they're willing and sometimes mm -hmm. they're not, but we have to figure it out. Yeah. Can you actually believe that we are 46 episodes in and I'm still serving you all avocados? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this is from like episode two. This is the Corey yeah. Corey yeah. Yeah. Wardrobe. Corey yeah. Yeah. I yeah. thought I had seen this go before. before. I've added a little bit of butter, lettuce, and shallots. You know, we've evolved. Yeah. <laughs> always yeah. evolving. Um, there you go. Always growing, always changing. <laughs> Our little homage to season one. It is crazy to think that we have done that many episodes in such a, such a short space of time. It's crazy to think that when we left, when we finished that season, mm -hmm. 
we were like, all right, we're going back to our regular lives yeah, now. Yeah, right. You know, we'll, that we're probably never going to be back to do this again. This was yeah. a lot of fun, guys. It was great meeting you. Yeah. I truly <laughs> thought that after one, season one and season two, some people might watch, but they won't right. connect with us as greatly as they clearly have. Yeah. I thought that was it. That was the end of my TV yeah. career, and that was yeah. OK. It was nice. Yeah. Thanks for having us. And now here we are. Wait, little segue. Do you remember the first time when we found out that there was a billboard? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That, that video so in the fun. van. I posted that recently. Uh, Literally, uh, like, screaming. screaming. I still scream when I see us on billboard. Every single bus stop, <laughs> yeah. and then in Chelsea along the wall, and then we're rushing yeah. back into, into Midtown to the go day, to Times yeah. Square. The day the like, show launched. Yeah. The first season. We, February we were 7th, 2018. Yeah. Uh, I, I hate chills yeah. thinking about was it. Was it the 8th? I don't remember. It could be the 7th. No, no, 7th, for sure. It was the women's long program of the Olympics. And we were, exactly. I feel like that was. I think we were in New York like we were? January 27th because we were there a week before it came um, out. You know, one of the things that I love about our show is how we help people evolve to become their better selves. Mm -hmm. And to watch some of our heroes, I mean, all of our heroes grow, but you know, some of them we all obviously connected with more than others. Yeah. We all have our relationships with them. I have to say, Neil Reddy, yeah. I'm so proud to watch his evolution from somebody who, very low self-esteem, you know, yeah. wouldn't even look you in the eye, yes. didn't want to touch you, yeah. to now, Blossoming little acting career, uh, an activist. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so, so proud of him. And yeah. to watch yeah, our really heroes impressive. take the baton we hand them yeah. and run with it, yeah. Yeah. that makes me so happy. I think for me, the one that always stands out as a, a, the son of immigrants and also the fact that um, I'm a family man, I have my own children, was Marcos in Philly. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it was like that epitome of the American story. It's your story, yeah. it's my parents' story, yeah. it's your story. Yeah. It's these stories of yeah. someone who came to this country and said, I'm gonna be better. And you're trying to balance between two cultures. Mm -hmm. And I think in that episode, what I really loved was all of us advocating as just human beings, but also as hosts for them to use their native language and mm -hmm. for them to be able to speak Spanish. Totally. And I thought Clara that was, see. yes, <laughs> it was, it was amazing. <laughs> because I think sometimes we can get into this, you know, people can get into modes of being like, well, you're on my show, you're here with us, yeah. so you just speak English, you do whatever. And mm -hmm. it was like, if this is what's gonna allow you to connect, if this is what's gonna help you to feel more confident, to build your family, to feel as if you are a part of America, which is so diverse, mm -hmm. then speak Spanish and yeah. we will still guide you through it. And and to see their family come together was probably one of the my most favorite episodes. Yeah. Ever. yeah. Speaking about languages and like what comes with all that, like yeah. what about Japan? Yeah. Oh my God. I don't know about you guys, but I was like super nervous going yeah. in thinking like, okay, we we're working with a translator, how is this gonna work? But I think it's just such a testament to, like, yes, our experiences are all different, mm -hmm. but like the universality of the things that we feel and like how we all just want to be better people and we're just doing our best. Which for me, it was Yoko mm -hmm. sleeping yeah. under her dining table and giving up her mm -hmm. bedroom so that somebody could stay in a hospice because she didn't want yeah. these elderly people to have yeah. the experience that her sister had. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna remember her forever. For, yeah. for me, that that is the the true test of the power of our show was Japan. We know that we can connect with other Americans. Uh, we know our culture well enough. We know what uh, what really makes us feel. However, knowing that we can go across the world to a culture where their, uh, their culture is so different, their, the way they express their emotion is and so different. And their pastries are significantly better. Significantly better. <laughs> the fact that, uh, that they live quite differently to the way we do, yet our, as far as I'm concerned, our show was just as successful there as it is anywhere else in the world. We were able to connect with them as much as we connected with any American. I think that just goes to show the hard work that we put in every episode to make sure that we are reminding the world of the joy that we bring. Yeah. Mm. Yes. I mean, I don't want to be like so political, but I can't help it because one thing that I thought about so much this year is just like all of Atlanta. And mm. I mean, I, well, first of all, Kathy Dooley. Mm. And when I think about all the places that we've all been together and all the people that we've met, I would have like never thought that little baby me would have like ended up back in that high school and back yeah. with literally Kathy Dooley. Sorry, and... walking with you in the halls of your high I school know. is one of yeah. my favorite moments. I mean, it's like so surreal to think that, so from Tokyo to yeah. Quincy and everyone that we've met, I mean, Marcos just like speaks so much to me. Rihanna spoke so much to me. There's so many people in Philadelphia that, yeah. um, Lily, I literally, like when I got my first post, 
COVID haircut with my friend Shireen, who I used to work with. That was actually the last one I was working at before I stopped doing hair full time. I was like, Lily, come to New York. I'm gonna treat you, get your hair done. So she went to Shireen and I was like, just like, yes, just Dr. Your best life. Yee. Yeah, Dr. Uh -huh. Yee, honey. So she got- You paged her to New York. I paged her to New York. <laughs> that's a reference stunning. to the episode, uh, paging Dr. Yee. Yes. But I think that's another thing about the show that is really special. And it is, there's like varying degrees of connection post meeting people, but there's so much care and connection yeah. that goes in yeah. to our relationships with everyone who we get to work with on the show. I'm so excited to be like, out of my house and meeting oh, yeah. new people yeah. and right. getting to connect with like yeah. new folks yeah. again. I wasn't sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we haven't seen in a while. <laughs> you mentioned Rihanna, and I couldn't go without talking about her more. Have you guys seen her business recently? Yes. Ah, you know, and not to say we did that, but it's just we did that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it 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 makes yeah. me think of inequality in America, mm -hmm. how she had fought and fought and fought to build a business, and it wasn't because she wasn't working her but yeah. off, she yeah. was, but she wasn't being given the opportunities yeah. right. that some people of other races are just handed and take for granted. I see that entire experience oh. with like a completely different lens And you now. just went in there and just made it equal and yeah. gave her the same help that other people have gotten financially, loans and things yeah. that she wasn't able to get. Yeah. Look at her thriving. She yeah. opened up her first, yeah. first freaking dog hotel, multiple grooming units. She I has know. a thriving business and all she needed was just the same level playing field that and we're not so even many shark people tank. get. Right. <laughs> to speak about, like, when I think about when we were filming in Atlanta in season one and two, to yeah. now being in Texas, it's 2021, we have a new president, but I think so much about Georgia and where we are because of Georgia yeah. and how different it would be if not for Georgia. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I'm not saying that we did this, but I just think about all the people who we are so Stacey close with. Abrams, yeah. But I think well, about- Well, I'm just saying, well, every time we go to a state, it kind of does flip blue. I mean, look- Georgia, <laughs> Pennsylvania, we go there and it flips blue. And I'm just saying, wait. watch out, Texas. And, yes. You're not here. wrong. It's I'm not. True. We flip, trying to we flip it blue. Sharice Davids and yeah. Kansas yes. City. Yeah, every state we go to, yes, we flip I mean, blue. It's except, been, yeah, except Missouri. Missouri yeah, was not did. the same, but we did get Sharice Davids. Yeah, we did. We had to go back. That wasn't literally us. Although I will say, when I'm thinking about my most moments, I literally campaigned for Sharice Davids with literally Michelle Kwan and literally Kansas yeah. City on the first day that I was yeah. dating in my adult life with literally Michelle Kwan. Like my inner child. I don't even know how like I haven't stroked out. <laughs> like, all of my dreams have I think you're about to stroke true. out right now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very yeah. nervous. It's happening. Uh, That's happening right now. But, no, just you know I would be so sad. But yeah, anyway, just so many fun moments, so many memories. Uh, I love yeah. you guys so much. Do you all feel that Philly was a little more challenging than other cities? Yeah, yeah. for sure. I, I found that a lot of our heroes were uh, a little more defensive. They, yeah, they weren't as yeah. easy to break yeah. down. They weren't gonna offer their emotions to us on a plate, which actually- East Coasters. Was, yeah, which was great actually. It made me work harder. It challenged me totally, to really yeah. find connection. Mm -hmm. And we have something obviously we know at the start of our show called Discovery where we really get to know them. We know so little about our heroes when we meet them for the first time. And so it meant that I was forced to really ask so many questions to find out who they were and how we can help them. In particular, Rihanna. I know we all love Rihanna very much. She is very special, but she was somebody who came into this so wholeheartedly, was willing to share every bit of information with us because she was so involved in making sure that she got the best out of her experience. And that's what makes the best Queer Eye episodes, in my opinion, is when somebody knows that this can be completely life altering and they grab that by the horns and say, take me anywhere, yeah. as long as it means it changes my life for the better. And I think that that's what we were able to achieve, achieve with Rihanna, because she was so open to us. Yeah. And one of the things I loved about that episode is that we we not only got to help her personally, because a lot of times it's just yeah. about the personal lives. Yeah. It was, you know, as business owners, we yeah. got to coach her in business. Yeah. And to watch her take those little nuggets of information know. we gave her and I build know. her little empire. I know. And have a baby. I know. Like she's a baby. mom and building a thriving Women business. Women can do it all. Yep. Yeah. I went really impressive. hard on her registry. I freaked out. It was like a Sunday. Oh. And I like <laughs> went on that Instagram and I was just like, click, click. Oh. click. I couldn't help it. I was like, ah, couldn't oh, help it. Bless. I love it so much. I got she the cutest blanket. Like Tanya, you were just touching a little bit on ambush and like showing up and not really knowing what to expect. Yeah. What's that? Because I feel like there's this misconception that people always think that we have this like planned weeks in advance mm -hmm. and all this information that we have. And about, we actually like, know them. No. We've met exactly. them. No. Right. Yeah. right. Everyone always assumes I've met them with, with the home yeah. design. You know, uh, often I do get information about the home, see pictures yeah. of the home before, just because we gotta measure. There's no yeah. way to get stuff instantly like that, yeah. you know, sofas, blinds and stuff. 
But as far as like finding out everything about them that's going to make that design feel like their home. Yeah. Also, once I get in there, looking around and seeing, you can tell a lot about somebody from their home. Yeah. You can tell if they're depressed often mm -hmm. by the things in their home, laundry that's building up, you know, their lack of motivations. And those are things that not only I use to get the design up to where it needs to be for them, but it's also sometimes information that I use to help you guys in, in your yeah. verticals. Yeah. Of, oh, I'm noticing this about their house, Grandma. I think there's some issues you should help. Oh yeah, I mean like when people always ask me, like you have these emotional moments where people just start crying on your shoulder. I'm like, it's because it's a skill, we work at it. Yeah. We truly do find ourselves asking the right questions, really digging deep, being vulnerable, being good listeners, mm -hmm. really understanding what they're going through. And we have to do that in a matter yeah. of three days. Yeah. It's like, I sit there with someone and I'm like, okay, really, what is going to be most effective that's gonna be a jumping point for you so that now you can blossom with all this other change? Yeah. And that's where you have to dissect because as we all know, all the heroes we have have a lot of little issues that yeah. we can help but we all have to focus in on what is gonna be the best. And I think it's amazing that even for all of us, we all somehow figure it out on our own mm -hmm. and it's always right on in line. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. We're always like right on the same page of like, okay, this is what we need to go yeah. to help them. And but you I, really can't go in with assumptions either. It's like, we literally figure this out the yeah. day we meet them and mm -hmm. that's where the game plan starts. I love that though, when you do go in with, with assumptions, they're always completely Oh, it's away. never, yeah, I learned yeah, that like after wrong. three episodes. Yeah. But I, it was I'd like, like okay. to believe that that's a skill of ours is that we understand how to pivot and change the direction of an episode. We have incredible producers on our show, yeah. wonderful story producers who have a plan of how the, the week will go, but sometimes somebody throws a spanner in the works and we need to it's change It's changed a few up. times, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, in design, going back to an episode in season mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. Corey, I was planning on doing the basement. Remember yeah. his main yeah. cave? Right. Like that was the whole plan. I knew all the measurements are down there. I, mm -hmm. I had dumpsters ready to get rid of all the junk. And then we get there and I realize, wait, he's spending way too much time in this mm -hmm. basement. He's yeah. not spending any time with his wife and yeah. daughters. We're gonna do the upstairs space so it's actually now a family space. Oh, and his dad's quilt. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah I know. Uh, one other point that I really want people at home to understand is that although we work incredibly hard, we do have a wonderful team behind yes. us. I have two incredible assistants who work with me to make sure that there's product in those wardrobes, that things are getting altered the way they need to. They do an incredible job, and every one of us has a person that we can rely on on yeah. our crew. But I think what yeah. would be really fun is like I would love to hear about what your process yeah. is. Like how do you yeah. like how do you approach like make your bring yeah. someone's style? How do you approach their closet? Like what happens? Yeah, I mean we I get this uh, so we get information beforehand. I don't know if you guys get information beforehand about. What they do? You send an, a question. I just need photos. Okay. I need I, I need photos the day before. So, I need like legit dietary restrictions and allergies, and that's okay, it. Okay. So I send it. Get the team to send a questionnaire that asks really simple things like, what color would you never wear? What is your favorite color? What's your favorite fit of jean? Have you ever worn this? Would you never wear this? And so at least I get some information before I meet them mm -hmm. because we need to lock down a right. location, and that can take weeks to arrange. So we need to kind of get an idea beforehand of who this person is and where they might actually shop if they were going out shopping. Uh -huh. And so uh, I know about two or three weeks in advance at least about who it is that we're gonna be helping. And then as soon as we meet them, sometimes they will surprise me on camera. They'll say, let's say for example, in the questionnaire they've said, I'm all about cowboy. I'm like, oh, wonderful. <laughs> and then I get them, they're like, you know what I hate more than anything? What is it? Cowboy. Maybe they misread the question. Uh -uh. And I'm like, well, that's how I was feeling that day. I was like, I kind of need to know how you're feeling all the time. Yeah. Um, so who is who is one of your like favorite? Who is one of your most like happy? Like when you were like done with that makeup, you're just like, oh, yes. I know exactly. I know exactly. Can I say who yes. I think it is? Doctor Yi. I was about to think. Well done. Dot to you. I know the smile on your face you have uh, yeah. when you hear you love dressing no, up girls. Ours, I do. Our and when energy girl. on that episode, Dr. Yes. Yes. I know. The I hair, the skin. I was literally about to say, when uh, you and I clothes. are in sync, I think that the, the hero feels something special. And they, they carry uh, themselves a certain way. No. It really is a special moment. I really feel like I opened up a can on that hair. Like, that was like one of like, yeah. I just really like, it just, it, Ugh, the fringe, yeah. the highlight, mm -hmm. the way, I mean, and also like not to shoot my own horn in there was a like respiratory pandemic that like prevented people from getting their hair done. But Lily's hair literally looked stunning perfection. I remember Basically it. from like August, 2019 until like, uh, 
April 2021. Like, I'm sorry, yeah. but that was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that color she was- She kept it up. It was yeah, seamless. Yeah, yeah. Well, she didn't. That's exactly the thing. Oh. She never got it done yeah, yeah. because it was a respiratory pandemic. And that color I gave her literally held up for a year and a half. I'm too good at my job. Yes, honey. <laughs> I was giving her credit and you were giving yeah. yourself. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, no, sorry yeah. Okay. You know, I think one of our dreams always is how can we reach out to more diverse people? Yes. Yeah. How can we meet new people with new stories? I think especially after this year, honey, we've been yeah. cooped up in our house a lot. I'm ready to meet some new people and do some new yeah. things. I'm excited to not only bring more hope and joy to the heroes that we're helping, but more hope and joy to the world yeah. because my God, we all need it right now. Uh -huh. After this last year, I can't wait to show people just the encouragement that I feel that the, the hope and joy that we're able to give our heroes, I feel encourages other people to get out there and do things for other people as yeah. well. Right. You know, I feel like we're just reaching out and handing that baton to our viewers and being like, go out there mm -hmm. and make the world a better place. Mm -hmm. And this is how you can start doing it. Yeah. yeah. Karma, what do you think about for season <laughs> six? I think that what I'm most excited about is the fact that during the pandemic, each of us learned so much about ourselves in the world. Mm -hmm. And as the stronger we get in our growth, and the stronger we get in understanding our own happiness, mm -hmm. the easier it is for us to really bring that to the people we help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so in 2020, there was so much I learned about myself and what I needed. Yeah. And now when I'm having conversations with people and like, especially during these seasons, I've been doing a lot more of like couples, mother and daughter, like really oh, yeah. facilitating intimate relationships mm -hmm. between family members and it's like, well, how do you now take what I've learned during this pandemic with my own family, with the healing that the world needed, and apply it to these situations? I think we're all gonna do that. And that just brings me a lot of happiness because it just means that we're just gonna keep getting better, the show's gonna keep getting yeah. better, and the world's gonna keep getting better. Let's keep doing it. Amen because you know that. when we're around, we things better. just keep you getting, getting better. better. <laughs> no, you did not. I did. You cheese <laughs> ball. I did it. it. Y'all, I am so happy just a moment of gratitude to be back with our friends, to be together again, yes. to be able to like, look at your faces. I missed you so much. I really didn't know if it was gonna happen again. I love you guys so much, and I'm so happy we're here to season six. Yeah. 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 Yeah.